this video, we're going to be discussing the initial setup and unpacking of your Arc Pro Plasma system. Um, as we have here pictured, this is an Arc Pro 6000. These directions will work just as well for any of our other machines. Your first step is going to be uncrate the whole system and unbox everything. Um, make sure you got all your parts, basically. Um, because some of the pieces of the frame, like the 45 degree braces and the legs, will be packed in possibly with the plasma cutter itself or with the computer system. So once you have everything unpacked, um, your first step is going to be to attach the legs. Now, the um, first thing you want to do is uh, basically the easiest way is to get the um, one side, either the front or the back of the machine, up on a sawhorse, um, or perhaps lift it up with the cherry picker. Um, all the machines are quite heavy, so I don't recommend you try to lift it up or have your friends lift it up. It's easier if you can put it on something. But once they're up, you'll be taking these, uh, they're 3 sixteenths, um, or five, I'm sorry, 5 sixteenths carriage bolts, 3 quarter inch long carriage bolts, okay? These bolts will either be in a bag or they will already be in place here. Um, more likely they'll be in a bag amongst the other parts. So you'll find these bolts and then you're going to place them in these um, uh, front bolt holes right here. These drilled holes in the front of all the plates. Okay. And then there's a T-slot along the leg. Now the leg will slide up into um, in the the head of the uh, carriage bolts will slide into that slot. You'll need to kind of arrange them so that they slip in. Um, but once you have them in, you'll need to, you just want to slide it up, uh, snug up against this bottom rail, and lightly tighten them down so they stay in place. Now, one thing to notice is there'll be leveling bolts mounted to the bottom of each uh, leg. You'll want to have those mounting bolts facing towards the outsides of the machine, so furthest away from the inside, as you see it pictured here. Okay. Now, um, another thing to notice, one of the legs will have this mounting bracket pre-installed on it. Okay. So that mounting bracket is for your control cabinet, and so you need to make sure, as you're looking at the front of the machine, that it is this front right side leg. Okay. Now once you have your front legs or your back legs installed, uh, just basically lift up the other side of the table and install the other set of legs. Okay. So now that you have the main legs installed, the next step is going to be attach a 45 degree brace. Um, basically what you'll find is you'll find these braces usually packed in with the plasma cutter. They will have a T-nut and a bolt on one end, and if you look on the underside of the side rails, you will find that one of the bolts for this angle brace is already put in place here. So simply what you need to do is to uh, attach your, um, your T-nut and bolt, slide it through this hole here, and then it'll slide up into this slot. And once you have it attached down here, just kind of line up your T-nut and then slide it up and then you'll need a um, Allen uh, wrench to tighten it up and uh, basically just get these nice and snug um, they don't have to be uh, super tight we'll tighten everything down once it's all up on its four legs so so now that you have the four legs on it with the angle braces what I want you to do is to simply loosen up these bolts a little bit and so let it, let gravity slide these legs firmly up against the side rails on all four and then tighten each one down as you get it nice and snug just crank it down and do the same for its angle brace and then just work your way around the table that way so now your four legs are going to be attached nice and securely the uh, next step is to attach your center bar legs. Um, you know, for a smaller 4x4 four four table, you'll have one center leg, and on the larger units, you're going to have two or three center legs, depending. 
Um, so basically, uh, you'll find your center legs and they simply bolt on underneath the table. Um, these bolts will already be in place for you. Um, and they use half inch wrenches. So now you got all your legs attached and the next step is going to be to put your control cabinet on. Control cabinet simply mounts in here and these bolts should be attached in place for you and uh, you simply mount it in place and tighten it down. Okay. Um, moving along the next step after you've gotten your control cabinet on is going to be to put your slats in. Um, your slats will be stored along this edge here for shipping um, but basically what you want to do is um, as you can see we're we have we're starting at the front of the table um, we've moved in three slots and basically put our first slot there and um, you're simply just slide one side in and then bend the slat and slide it into the corresponding slot that matches up so they're, they're on in the same slot so this one's three slots in on the other side of the table it will also be three slots in okay and then you'll install your slats every other slot basically and you'll have enough slats to cover the whole table now we have the extra slots put in place if you want to add your own additional slats um, this can be helpful if you're doing a lot of uh, intricate artwork and you're going to find um, you're finding that you're having a lot of tip ups increasing the sl um, the number of slats can decrease your tip ups now one little feature we've added recently that I want to point out are um, uh, these material stops um, you'll find these either mounted on the right or left hand side of the machine um, they can go on either side um, of the machine basically they just slide along this slot you'll find two of them and so these can be adjusted anywhere along the side of the machine and then they can be tightened down and adjusted in and out so that um, when you lay a piece of material down here you can simply slide it up against this stop and it will be in line with your cutter so that you don't have to line your sheet up. Uh, now this little stop also twists so that you can set it so it's just above the material surface which will um, decrease the likelihood you'll hit it with the plasma cutter if you're cutting close to the edge. So once you got your legs on, your slats on, and your control cabinet mounted, okay, next step is going to be to mount your computer monitor. Um, this uh, simply mounts here. Um, you'll have a set of four screws that will go into this back plate here, and you'll have the power cable and the monitor cable zip tied right here. And uh, you'll attach those, and then moving on, the next step is going to be to mount your computer. If you open up the cabinet, you'll see that um, all your cables for your computer are mounted here, except for you'll need to run the um, keyboard and the mouse cable through this hole here and into the cabinet so that it can be a, in, uh, out here so that you can attach it to your computer. So basically just plug all your cables in, make sure they seat nice and firmly, and screw all the connection terminals in. Um, the last thing you want is a loose cable. They can be very difficult to uh, troubleshoot if you don't know it's there. Um, and they can cause uh, weird erratic behavior. So make sure all your tables cables are tight the first time you put them in and you'll eliminate that problem. So once you have your computer hooked up and in place, you basically your cabinet's going to look like this. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about some of the, the, uh, the f what we got here. This is your, your, your power strip in here. This is going to have a switch over here. This is where you're going to be able to turn everything on and off and it will also turn on your fan. And um, So generally uh, after you've powered down your machine you're going to turn this power strip off and that will turn off your cooling fan. Um, if you look here along this left hand side of the machine 
you will see where your motor cables are plugged in. You'll see X, Y, you can't really see it in this picture, but you'll see it on your machine. There'll be a sticker that says X, Y, Z, and A. Okay, if you feel on the edge of the machine or the control box here, you will feel that there will be four little points for plugs to go in. Okay, uh, now the next step we're going to be doing is hooking up the um, limit or the, uh, the home switches and the motor cables. Okay, so if you look on the side of your machine, you'll have a bundle of cables coming along here. There'll be four large ones that have. Um, plugs on the ends of them, those are your motor wires and they will be labeled X, Y, Z, and A. So feed those motor cables in through here, okay, and then match them up with the corresponding plugs along the edge. Um, the plugs can only go in one way and they have a little snap feature that, that kind of snaps in them in place once they're locked down so you want to make sure that you get them locked down and firmly seated into the control um, and so basically just X the X plug goes to the X and then so forth X Y Z and A um, so make sure you get the the cables firmly plugged in now one thing to remember is that you never want to remove these cables when the power to this box is on. Um, if those cables are removed, sometimes you can damage the drive motors. Okay. So now that you got your motor cables plugged in, the, uh, the next step is going to be to hook up your um, home switches. So the home switches are going to be pulled out already to this terminal out here. Okay. You'll find a set of spade plugs, on the ends of the other, uh, f there'll be four wires with a total of eight spade plugs on them, and they'll be labeled X, Y, Z, and A. And you'll simply match them up with the correct, um, uh, down below it'll be marked. You'll have a sticker that says X, Y, Z, and A. Right, so you simply match them up and tighten those down. And once you're done with those connections, and you've pulled the power cable for your um, power strip out, um, you're done with all your electrical connections. Your computer's hooked up, your motors are plugged in, your home switches are plugged in. Everything is correct. Everything's wired. Um, so double check all your wiring. Make sure everything seats nice and firmly. Make sure all your connections are good. Um, and the, uh, the next step we're going to move on to is hooking up your plasma cutter. So, um, this, these instructions are going to mainly talk about hooking up a hypertherm system, but it's going to be pretty much the same for other models too. And if there's a specific situation, we'll have talked about it prior to you receiving your machine. Um, but basically, you know, get your plasma cutter hooked up. This is, we're showing a 65 here. Um, and you'll see that there is, a box um, that will be velcroed onto the side of the machine. This is your sensor box and then off that box will be coming a cable and usually this is already pre-installed. Um, usually I'll have pre-installed this wire for you. But you just want to make sure that you're plugged in um, securely here and that sorry the uh, all these plugs are securely in place. Basically it's just a four little plug, just real similar, the same thing as the motor cables, and then there's a radio jack plug right here. You just want to make sure that's firmly seated in place. Okay? And then the last thing is you'll see that there's a long yellow uh, Cat5 cable inside your control cabinet that is plugged into the side of your um, control cabinet. What you'll want to do is pull this club cable back out the um, <clears throat> this hole in the back that all the other motor cables come through and that will plug into your sensor box here okay now generally you're looking to probably keep your plasma cutter about oh I'd say ideally at least five feet maybe even ten feet away from your control cabinet 
it'll minimize the chances of um, interference basically happening with the system. Um, usually it's not a problem. One thing you can do is, I mean, basically if, if, if you're, you're looking at your machine, uh, you know, have your control cabinet over here and then basically set your plasma cutter over here and generally you're going to be fine provided that your your torch has enough cable to reach basically um, if it does set it set it as far away as you can basically um, and that cut five cable will be the cable that will go out to it um, so once you have that done I mean of course you're going to need to hook up your air supply to your plasma and um, you're definitely going to want to have nice, clean, dry air for your plasma cutter. It's very important. Um, if you run with uh, wet air or air that has oil in it, you will notice it. You will ruin your tips very quickly. Your cut quality will not be as good. Um, I recommend getting a very good desiccant drying system or even better, getting a um, refrigerated air drying system and you will definitely get higher quality cuts than if you don't have it. Okay, so um, at this point, your machine is fully hooked up and everything, all your plugs are in place, your uh, computer's ready to power on and you're ready to start moving through the other um, instructional tutorials, uh, starting with powering the basics of the, the Mach 3 screen and also the jogging uh, videos. Um, so um, thank you for purchasing your system and um, please don't hesitate to give us a call if you have any questions about the setup of your machine.